Hi, I'm Mike Cowell. I'm the director of the Business Innovation Zone. The Business Innovation Zone, or the Biz, was created to help high growth potential entrepreneurs and businesses in central Iowa. We provide a variety of services, including mentoring, consulting, counseling, validating business models, and help with access to funding for high growth companies. We offer also a number of networking opportunities, including luncheons uh, once a month and all day seminars on subjects such as marketing and finance. You can find out more about the biz at www.bizci.org. Okay, so now that we have identified the who, that's who's on first base, the next thing we need to talk about is what's on second base, which is what. So, all right, let's look at this car. If you were going to sell this car, like we did the shoes, what would your headline be? Babe magnet. I'm sorry? Babe magnet. Babe magnet. Chick magnet. Yeah. Okay. Fast. Midlife crisis. Midlife crisis. <laughs> Recently divorced. Okay, so again, it changes a little bit if we're talking to him, right? So if he's on the showroom floor, then maybe chick magnet, right? One would like to think too young to be divorced or having a midlife crisis. What else might you talk to him about? Fast, Fast right? Okay, what else? Power, Power right? Talk about the size of the engine, even though he probably has no idea what you're talking about. Okay, now what if you're talking to him? Yeah, isn't that interesting? <laughs> isn't, isn't that interesting that that's a constant? And you know, I use this example all the time, and I have never, ever put that slide up where someone has not said either babe or chick magnet, ever. So just tell you where all of our heads are at. But anyway, sure, and so for him, it's a midlife crisis. You deserve it, you've earned it, right? So the challenge when you're talking about the what is, uh, and I just wrote a column about this for the business record, we kind of live in this bullet point society. You know, USA Today has trained us that if uh, an article has more than 100 words and it doesn't have a chart, then we don't really want to read it, right? So we synthesize everything down, and what, and what we say to ourselves is people are so busy, 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 busy. But if we get down too far that all we do is list features, we're missing the point. Because what we're asking our who's to do, our consumers, is we're asking them to think about figuring out what the feature is and how it matters to them. So really what we need to be doing is we need to be moving down the continuum when we talk about our products or services to features, to advantages, to benefits, right? And, and, and the way that plays out is this. A feature is a fact. An advantage is a personalized fact. But a benefit is an emotion. So when we said to the guy, the middle-aged guy, you have worked hard your whole life, you deserve this, that is a benefit. And we buy everything based on emotion. Everything from toothpaste to a car and everything in between, right? We buy based on emotion. So the more you can pick at their emotion, the more likely you are to connect with them with your message. So for example, for Pat, he can talk about his years of experience and all that other stuff, but what he really is gonna talk about is, it's 10 o'clock, you have a big report due at either school or work tomorrow, and your computer isn't working. Who do you call? Because now he's playing on their fear, right? And that's when people start paying attention, is when you start playing on and reminding them of the emotional triggers that what you sell can either heighten if it's a good emotion or dampen if it's a bad emotion. And by the way, which one do you think we're more, more motivated by, the bad emotions or the good emotions? Yeah, the bad. So in the carrot and stick world, we move much quicker with our wallets when there's a stick involved. So identifying what your customer or prospects are worried about or afraid of or concerned about or feel uh, inadequate about, they don't know enough to make a good decision, identifying those and showing how you can make those feelings go away is a very powerful thing. Okay, so I wanna do a little example. So again, I've got an alarm clock that I'm selling, right? And so I can talk about that it glows in the dark and 
you know, it's battery operated if your power goes out. And then I can say, oh, you know what, and you don't want to be late, and everybody oversleeps, right? That's a personalized fact. Um, but what it's really about is how you're going to feel if you get fired, right? You, you, that, so that's how you take that continuum. I'm not even talking about the clock anymore. Now I'm talking about the end result, the fear of not using my product, and what is the result. So when you, be, when you start thinking about the products and services you sell, you need to sort of, in your head, move down from the, I have 10 years of experience, I do this, or we have over you know, 20,000 square feet of stuff, whatever the facts are, you need to move into the benefit. So what is it, what emotion do you either heighten or dampen? So for example, let's look at some of these. So the self-setting clock uh, is an advantage is convenience. The 50 number speed dial, fewer keystrokes, Financial reports with one click, I can get immediate information. Custom programs were designed just for you. Somebody said that they take big programs like Salesforce. Was that somebody over here? Yeah. yeah. And customize it for your business, right? Uh, open 24 hours a day. So when you need it, you know, great. Batteries included, great, ready to use. You don't have to remember to do that. Anti-lock brakes, you stop faster. So what do you suppose the benefit if we're talking about a self-setting clock and a convenience. What are the benefits of these? So let's look at this for a second. Whoops. So let's talk about if you're a self-setting clock and it's convenience, what would be some of the benefits of that to an, a consumer? What fears or what worries, what emotions might be triggered by that product and what would it resolve? Never have to worry about being late. Right, never have to miss an appointment, right? Daylight savings time. Daylight savings time, yep. So for the busy executive, what about the 50 number speed dial? You're never caught without a client's number, you know, that sort of thing. Again, you're talking to them about what matters to them. You're not really talking about the service or the product anymore. You know, the one-click financial reports, know exactly where your business is at at any given time, right? You don't have to wait to the end of the month. You don't have to crunch all the numbers. You don't have to sit up all night doing that. But with one click, you can see where your business is at. Uh, custom programs, that's about, you know what, no waste, less downtime in terms of learning this big, robust program that you only need 10% of, right? Open 24 hours, shop when you want. If your kid is sick in the middle of the night, where do you go? Walgreens, why? They're open 24 hours a day, right? So again, what you're doing is you're sort of taking a snapshot or a slice out of somebody's life and recognizing what they're worried about or what they want more of, and you're telling them through your copy how to get it. So a, a story that some of you may have heard already is, you know, there's a story about a college professor who walked into class and he had a shovel and he was holding it up in his class. He said, sell me this shovel. So the kids were talking about the steel blade and the real wood handle and he let him go for about 10 or 15 minutes and then he said, no, 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 you're missing the point, you're selling me the shovel. And they all said kind of like, you know, who's on first? Well, you told us to sell you the shovel. And he said, no, the way you sell the shovel is you talk to me about the hole that I need to dig. Because no one buys a shovel because they just want to have a shovel. You buy it because you have a problem you want to solve. You have something that you want to get done. And so you don't talk about the shovel. We are all guilty. When you go back and you look at your website or you look at your brochure, whatever material you have, I promise you, odds are you talk about your shovel way more than you talk about the hole that your shovel digs. And you need to go back and start thinking about your copy and the way your sales presentations are done and the way your contracts are written. You need to go look at all of that stuff. And you need to make sure that there's a whole lot more hole than shovel. Because that right there will set you apart from your competitors. Because psychologically what happens is when you read a website or you hear someone give uh, a sales presentation, and they're talking about the whole, you know what we immediately think? Oh my God, they get me. They know. They he oh, they know my pain. They know what I'm worried about. They know what I want to accomplish. They, I, whoa, we're, we're in sync. And all you're doing is acknowledging what you know, but most people spend time